Buongiorno, benvenuto o bentornato. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I want to take you on a mouth-watering journey through the delicious world of Italian street food. I know everyone knows how good Italian cuisine is, right? Giusto? But you may not be aware that when you are consuming Italian street food, you're actually enjoying a piece of our unique history and tradition. So for each Italian street food, I will explain what it is, its origins and the history behind it, plus some special insider tips so that you can enjoy them to the fullest in your next visit to Italy. So I recommend you take notes and also be ready to be very hungry by the end of this video. Also, don't forget to let me know which one is your favorite Italian street food in the comment section below. Okay, let's begin. Iniziamo! The first street food I want to tell you about is arancini. Arancini, singular arancino, is, um, they are uh, rice balls, so it's rice cooked with saffron, uh, filled in with meat ragu, and peas and cheese, and but then bolt up and breaded and deep fried until you achieve a golden and crispy crust. And this is a typical dish from Sicily in southern Italy. Sicily is the southernmost region of Italy. It's an island and mm, probably not a coincidence. That's where I come from because I was born in Sicily and grew up in Siracusa. So this is the first Italian street food I want you to know about, arancini. Now, the origins of arancini dates back to the 10th century during the Arab domination in Sicily. Not many people are aware of the fact that actually Sicily had a long Arab domination that left a lot of traces in the culture, the food, and even in the language, in the Sicilian dialect. And arancini are just one example of that. So they were born as a recipe that was uh, good for a practical meal when traveling because it was very easy to transport and consume them and over over time they have evolved a lot now you can find so many different variations with so many different fillings but nevertheless they are one of the most important symbols of sicilian cuisine and it's definitely one of the most beloved street food in sicily and all around italy now for the insider tip you have to know that this food is known with two different names, well, two very similar names, but one version is arancino and the other one is arancina, so feminine. What's the difference? Well, the difference is where you are in Sicily. People from the East Coast, like myself, will call this arancino, masculine. But if you go to Palermo, so uh, on, and on the West Coast of Sicily, they will say arancina. Who's right? Well, don't ask me because this is um, this a debate that really creates a lot of issues between east side of Sicily and west side of Sicily. Of course, I will always say arancino, but if you want to blend with the locals and you're visiting west coast of Sicily, so Palermo around there, you may prefer to say arancina. Uh, whereas if you come to the east coast of Sicily, then you may want to say arancino. In any case, it's delicious and you must have it. Okay, the second street, Italian street food I want to talk about is pizza al taglio. Pizza al taglio. So, what is it? What's pizza al taglio? Of course it's pizza, but al taglio means to the cut, literally. So what does that mean? Pizza al taglio is a type of pizza that's cooked in large rectangular pans and then cooked into rectangular portions. So it's different from the classical round pizza that you may have already tried in Italy. Uh, when it's, to it's uh, sold in uh, places that are different than the classical ristorante pizzeria. They are called pizzeria al taglio, so usually they specialize in this kind of pizza. And when you enter in one of these places, you find an incredible variety of different uh, 
toppings. So you have a lot of different uh, rectangular slice, slices of pizza with different to toppings, and that's pizza al taglio. Uh, they can go from the classical uh, mar pizza margherita, but they can, you can easily find more crea creative or seasonal options. Uh, pizza al taglio is typical of Rome, but now is available in any Italian city, and it's considered a classical uh, street food, Italian street food because it's uh, easier to consume while walking or standing, and so it's ideal for a quick snack. Um, Regarding its history, there are different opinions on when it was invented, whether it was in the 1800 or in the 70s of last century, but in any cases, it was considered as a quick and economical alternative to traditional meals. So here's my insider tip. The good thing of pizza al taglio, listen up, is that you can try multiple types of pizza toppings at once. When you get in one of those pizzerie al taglio, so the spe special pizzerias that are devoted to this kind of pizza, you don't have to restrict to yourself to just one type of pizza. You can pick as many as you want. You're not getting a whole round pizza as usual. You're getting a, a you know it's quite a big slice, but it's just one rectangular slice. So you can mix and match. Uh, that's 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 usually why we Italians also pick that. For for example, when we want to have some pizza to take home, we may go to Pizzeria Al Taglio and pick different, different toppings because it's more fun to try different ones at once. So do that in your next trip to Italy. Take some different slices of pizza al taglio for yourself. Okay, next one is piadina romagnola or just la piada. What is piadina romagnola? Piadina romagnola is a flat and soft bread made with flour, water, salt, and traditionally lard. It's a sort of wrap uh, stuffed with a variety of ingredients such as cheese, cold cuts, grilled vegetables, and then after it's also cooked on a griddle. Now, the origin is uh, Emilia Romagna, um, the region in Italy that's in central northern Italy, central northern Italy, uh, that's famous for tortellini, parmigiano, prosciutto crudo. They also have this specialty, which is la piada or la piadina romagnola. It origins dates back to the Etruscan. So the Etruscan were an ancient population living in Italy before the ancient Romans. Uh, but the name, the name we know, uh, we know it with today, comes from the Italianization of the Emilia Romagna dialect. Uh, so the name from the Emilia Romagna dialect, and this uh, Italianization was made by a famous Italian poet, Giovanni Pascoli, who actually dedicated a short poem to the Piadina Romagnola. We do love our food in Italy. You can tell that from this. Now, here's my insider tip. Um, this is considered a typical fast meal on summer nights at the beach. So if you ever visit uh, like um, the Adriatic Sea coast where uh, Emilia Romagna is and where the biggest uh, Emilia Romagna cities are, some of the biggest Emilia Romagna cities are, uh, then you cannot skip on this. Just try Piadina Romagnola and try it with the classical feeling of prosciutto crudo, rucola and cheese. It's amazing. Okay, next one is focaccia genovese. We're traveling quite a bit with this Italian street food tour. So what is focaccia genovese? Focaccia genovese is a soft and thick bread, similar to pizza, but it's usually um, thicker and soft, very soft, uh, and uses a lot of olive oil. That's another uh, characteristic of focaccia. Uh, it's often fla flavored with rosemary, uh, coarse salt, and sometimes even with anchovies or onions. Those are more elaborated versions. The basic version is just uh, rosemary, salt, and or a lot of oil. And the goodness of this is that it's very crunchy in the outside, but inside it's very soft and airy. 
so amazing. This is originally from uh, Liguria, which is a region in the northwest of Italy, and especially of the, of the city of uh, Genova. To give you a little bit more context, this is the region of Cinque Terre, which are very famous. Uh, the history is that initially it was a simple food for sailors because of course most of the economy of this region is based on the sea and for workers because it was so easy to carry around and to preserve but today is something that we all enjoy in all italy so this is a type of food that you can easily find in any italian region so here's my insider tip um, if you go to any italian city and you find a Pizzeria al taglio, the one I was talking just a few minutes before, um, just a few minutes earlier, then uh, they will most probably have focaccia too. So grab a piece of, piece of focaccia too because it's delicious. Okay, Italian street food numero 5, number 5. And let's get back to Sicily with cannoli siciliani. Now, what are cannoli siciliani? By the way, un cannolo, due cannoli, many cannoli. Cannoli are made of a crunchy cylindrical shell that's fried, deep fried, and they're filled with uh, sweet ricotta, sweetened ricotta, and in, usually enriched with chocolate chips or and usually candied fruit. And it can be decorated with powdered sugar and sometimes with chopped pistachios. So this is a sweet, a uh, dessert kind of uh, Italian street food. And the origin is Sicily, we invented that, and it dates back to the Arab period again. So probably around ninth, uh, between the 9th and the 11th centuries. So now here's my insider tip. The real authentic Sicilian cannolo uses sheep ricotta, not cow ricotta. Oh, what's the difference? There is a huge difference. It's not the same, believe me. So if you want to try the real authentic one, ask if it has sheep ricotta in it. It's so amazing. You have to tell you have to try that and you will be able to tell the difference. Plus, in some areas, that's actually uh, something very mm, good that some places do in some in some areas they actually cover the inside of the shell with chocolate so that this creates a layer that prevents the cannoli from getting mushy from the wetness uh, the humidity of the ricotta that's inside so remember ship ricotta and if possible the inner layer with chocolate oh you will thank me later Okay, let's move on to suppli. Suppli are rice croquettes uh, with tomato sauce and with a melting heart of mozzarella. They are then breaded, breaded and fri deep fried to achieve a crunchy exterior and a soft, flowerful interior. They are originally from Rome, though, where they are one of the most popular street foods. And their name derives from the, actually from French, from the French word for surprise, because that alludes to the surprise of the mozzarella hurt inside them when you eat them. So here's my insider tip. They are great, wonderful, but they must not be confused with the Sicilian arancino. Remember we talk about the arancino? Suppli, ha, they are both made of rice, they both have a rounded shape, even though for arancino you can also find the version with a point. But the difference is this. Suppli has tomato sauce and cheese inside, whereas the real authentic Sicilian arancino has rice with saffron, meat, ragu, and peas and cheese. So if you're served an arancino that doesn't have ragu, that doesn't have peas, because Italian ragu, the Sicilian ragu is made with peas, uh, and it doesn't have saffron or one, one of these, then that's not an arancino. The suppli is amazing, but it only has uh, salsa di pomodoro, tomato sauce, and mozzarella. So, know the difference. Okay, on to more sweet stuff with gelato artigianale. What is that? Well, I think there's no person in the world probably who doesn't know what gelato is, so it doesn't really need an introduction, but I want to, expl to um, explain what artigianale means. 
Um, artigianale means artisan, so it's the way we distinguish in Italy between the uh, box, uh, the box gelato that you buy in supermarkets, and the freshly made artisan gelato that you buy in gelaterie. So gelateria is a, a store in Italy, a sh- uh, not, not a store, sorry, it's a small shop that only sells gelato artigianale. That's the one that we prefer whenever possible in Italy. You can find gelato artigianale everywhere in Italy and its origins are debated. It is believed that he has very ancient roots dating back to at least the Middle Ages. Its popularity though exploded in the Renaissance when Italian artists and chefs began experimenting with ingredients and techniques. So here's your insider tip. Never ever order just one flavor. Don't do that. That's not how we eat gelato in Italy. The tradition in Italy is that you need to get at least two different flavors and up to four different flavors, depending on how big is your cup or cone, for each cup. So go for at least two different flavors and experiment with different combinations. That's the proper way to eat gelato the Italian way. Okay, moving on, let's go back to more savory foods and let's talk about panino con la porchetta. Panino con la porchetta. What's that? That's a sandwich, a panino. Uh, Usually it's a rosetta uh, or a homemade bread that's stuffed with porchetta, which is a herb and spiced pork roast. And this is originally from the regions of Umbria and Lazio, so central regions, uh, especially from the city of Ariccia, Ariccia in Lazio. They are an integral part of the culinary tradition of central Italy, all central Italy regions, and, they're, and that's true especially during festivals and markets. The history is that the traditional porchetta is believed to date back to Roman times. So it was probably in or- in the origin in its origins was probably a dish for special occasions, but it became popular as a street food in the 20th century. Here's your insider tip for your panino con la porchetta. You will easily find a food truck that sells panino con la porchetta in any farmer's market in Italy. And they are great for a meal on the go. And keep in mind that in Italy, usually every city, every town has at least one day where in the morning they have a farmer's market. So just ask for that day, il giorno del mercato, the day of the market, and you will probably uh, will be able to get yourself some panino con la porchetta. Okay, let's move on to olive ascolane. Olive ascolane. They are large green olives and typically it's the ascolana variety. That's the specific name of the olive. Uh, They are pitted and stuffed. So they are stuffed olives. They are filled with meat, can be beef, pork or chicken. And they are flavored with nutmeg and sometimes lemon. Then they are breaded and fried and they are delicious. They are crunchy in the outside and very soft inside and very meaty. The origin is from the province of Ascoli Piceno in the Marche, Marche region, not a very well-known region. It's on the east coast, on the Adriatic coast in central Italy. It is believed that uh, Oliva Scolane were created in the 19th century as a dish to be served during aristocratic banquets. Now it has become a very popular uh, street food you know, in all Italy, used as an appetizer or an aper- like an um, aperiti- aperitivo food or again as a street food. The insider tip I have for you for Oliva Scolana is this. The city of Ascoli Piceno actually has an entire festival dedicated to Oliva Scolana for several days in the summer. They, they celebrate their Oliva Scolana, you know, very seriously. But if you cannot, it don't happen to be in Ascoli uh, in the right time of the year, you can really f- you can find pretty easily these Oliva Scolane in all central Italy and sometimes even in northern regions and in southern regions because nowadays Oliva Scolane have become very popular in all Italy. 
Ok, last but not least, ultimo ma non meno importante, panelle, le panelle. Le panelle are um, thin fritters that are made with chickpea flour. This is very unique. Uh, they're made with chickpea flour, water and parsley. Then they're seasoned with salt and black pepper and cooked until crispy. And they're often served inside a sandwich or as a snack on their own. They are light and flavorful and they represent an interesting vegetarian alternative in the street food, Italian street food landscape. They are originally of Palermo in Sicily. Palermo is the capital of Sicily uh, and they have very ancient origins, probably again introduced in, in Sicily during the Arab domination. They were originally a poor man's food because we, they were prepared with something that was simple and accessible like uh, chickpea flour. And nowadays they have become one of the most famous Palermo street food. So here's my insider tip. If you visit Palermo, look for food trucks selling pane e panelle, bread and panelle. That's a delicious sandwich to get a fast meal in. Okay, so there you have it. Top 10 Italian street food explained. I hope I was able to make you hungry and also to really share with you all the history behind a single bite. So what do you think? Which one is your favorite one? Which one would you really like to try in your next visit to Italy? Let me know by leaving a comment down below. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos. That's all for today. Ciao da Valentina.